Hi guys, today this will be the third out of ten sections of the Nematode presentation and research project that I'm just doing for fun. Um, so this is an adaptation to the Abisha PowerPoint um, that you can find at the bottom of the slide. Um, so if you want to know some other stuff about nematodes or uh, whatever, um, it's a good um, it's a good resource. So this will be the second out of, uh, the first out of two uh, morphology presentations that I'll be doing. There's just too much to put into one video, so I split it into two. Previously, we looked at this figure um, where we stated it was uh, long, so longer than it is taller. It's cylindrical and it has a tube from mouth to anus, and this is important because that means that species aren't just uh, have evolved to not just suck in food and spit it out the same hole, um, so that's nice. But this also doesn't describe much more than a pool noodle, um, so Abisha also includes a general uh, a general feature of it, um, which is its fusiform shape, which means it's just tapered at both ends, so it's not flat like a pool noodle is. So here we can look at the color of the nematodes, which are generally white and tan, um, as you can see with this whale and cod parasite species. However, um, they can be red, and this can be due to uh, many reasons, such as pseudosolomic fluid, um, their own hemoglobin, or by ingesting the host's hemoglobin into the parasite. Um, so generally, generally white and tan, but also there's possible red variation. Um, so starting from the outside in, we have nematodes can have these spines on them. So that, that can be protective, um, you know, as spines generally are. So these are just two examples, uh, one that has a lot of small spines and one that has less larger spines, but very adaptable, many different variations. Um, underneath of that is the cuticle and under the cuticle is the epidermis layer. The epidermis actually secretes the cuticle. So cuticles um, are generally this like waxy, I want to say almost like lubricated layer. Um, and the formal definition, a formal definition is that it provides a protective barrier against mechanical injury, water loss, and infection. So that's pretty helpful. Um, and this cuticle layer can be shed periodically. And it's important to note that um, in gut-dwelling species, the cuticle is generally thicker because in the gut has some pretty acidic and corrosive um, fluids in it that could be harmful to the nematode. But in histoic, which is like intercellular or just generally not gut-dwelling species, it doesn't have to be thick. So just it, it makes sense if you think about it because the gut dwelling species just need this uh, adaptation um and again they're super adaptable to everything so they can have a variety of mouth parts um it, and but there are a few traits that are uh kind of similar but like in different uh variations so here we'll start with um this large cuticle or outgrowth or alavia which is these big foldings here um, and then they can also have large uh, denticles which are these rigid plates which can help for crushing or biting or whatever and again teeth teeth are good for crushing and biting we have teeth so you know it's easy to know what they're good for um, and then these papillae which are these chemoreceptors or chemical receptors um, which help to let the uh, nematode know what chemicals are like in the area. So we've discussed that the complete, uh, the, the tube from mouse anus is its digestive system and the official term for that is complete digestive system. Um, so that's a very good helpful adaptation. Um, and it's the first to really have this. Um, so, a bishop discusses three parts about this complete digestive system, and the first section is the stomodium, or foregut, so before gut, um, which a bishop includes as the mouth part, um, mouth and lips, 
the buccal capsule. This is where the teeth and crushing usually happens. Um, and then the pharynx or the esophagus. So after the uh, foregut is the intestine or, you know, actual gut. Um, and so this is pretty straightforward. It is the intestine. And so this is the primary um, thing, the primary area where the nematode gets the famous term a tube within a tube because the intestine tube is within the worm tube. Um, so it's very basic anatomy there. Um, and then the last part is the proctodium, which is behind gut, so after gut. So this is where it expels um, its digestive materia, which includes the anus, always. But I've looked at different species, or different um, papers and different references, and some of them said um, included, like, reproductive areas, um, because it still expels stuff, um, but some of them did not. I just wanted to make that, just share that fact, um, but I guess it just depends on what paper you're citing. Uh, or the last major system is the nervous system, which is relatable because we have one as well. Um, and so the nematodes have this uh, neurons, these neuronal cell bodies, or like swollen nerve bundles, um, which here is called the ganglia. And this is probably the closest thing it has to a brain. They're pretty simple and low, um, lowly evolved species, so they don't have they don't have a system nearly as complex as like specifically mammals. Um, and this then also, um, sorry, and then there's a ventral cord and a dorsal cord. Um, so a long strain of nerves that go over the top and the bottom, which give rise to the structure of the nerve ring and the commissures, which just helps to let the, helps with sensory, you know, let the, nematode know where it's going or where it is and then it connects to the muscles so the muscles can react just like a regular nervous system just less parts and last thing um abisha discusses that is important is it does not have a fully developed respiratory system so humans and land animals generally have um, lungs and fish have um gills um but this nematode, along with many other invertebrates, uh, don't have <laughs> either of these. So sometimes they have these pores, which allow for diffusion of oxygen, or just semi-permeable membranes, which also just allow for diffusion of oxygen or other chemicals that they may need. They also don't have a complete circulatory system. So humans have, uh, we have veins and arteries, but they don't have that. They have an open system that kind of just sloshes around and it gets sloshed around um, because of when the muscles contract, it's gonna move fluids, internal body fluids out of the way. So that's it for today. Um, stay tuned for the second morphology presentation.